the other point I wanted to make is that Vedic philosophy and Vedic culture is not really a religion in the sense that we Westerners identify or, or uh, think of. We think of a, a religious involvement or a relig religious philosophy as something you do on the side if you so inclined. But Vedic philosophy is known as Dharma. Sometimes we've heard that word Dharma. And in English it's translated as religion. But actually Dharma does not mean religion. It means the characteristic of a thing which can never be separated from it. Like, for example, sugar is sweet. If the thing is not sweet, it's not sugar. Fire is hot and illuminating. Uh, salt is salty. And on and on. Water is liquid. When it freezes, oh, that's a temporary. That's not its normal, natural condition. So, when, when we speak of Dharma and philosophy of Dharma, um, in the Bhagavad Gita, what do we mean in terms of a human being? Because Bhagavad Gita is meant for human beings, not for cats and dogs. We, we, the students all come here, they're not cats and dogs, they're human beings. And a human being is supposed to be executing his dharma, his natural uh, characteristic. So the question is, what is that natural characteristic? What is every single human being on the face of the earth, his dharma is that he is subordinate. He is always a servant. No matter how powerful, how wealthy, how famous or influential a person may be, there is always someone who is more powerful under whom he has to uh, conduct himself. Just like in this classroom, the professor is the, how do you say, uh, uh, the authority. But we know the professor also has an authority and ultimately goes to the dean. The dean also has some authority over the Board of Education or whatever, on and on. Even the President of the United States, he has some superior. We may not know who it is. It may be his wife, I don't know, <laughs> or her girlfriend, whatever. But the characteristic of every human being is that he is a servant. And the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita aims, and the whole culture, whole Vedic culture aims at one thing, one goal. Gati means goal. The human being has a goal, just like you are all in school, you have some goal. You're going to go out and become a businessman or a political man or a computer tech or whatever. So everyone is here because you're pursuing some goal. So the ultimate goal for the human being is to re-establish his relationship with the Supreme Being. So someone will say, I don't believe there's any Supreme Being, that's nonsense, what is that? That's okay, but you must submit to someone. Just like, maybe uh, you're all young, but Bob Dylan had a famous song, You've Got to Serve Somebody. Beautiful song, great song, because it's based on a principle which is irrefutable. It can't be, you can't negotiate. You must submit. 